Thank you. So right off, I got this feeling. You know, that feeling, that feeling that something ain't right, something's off, right? You get a feeling like that and you tell yourself, eh, you're just being negative, you know, seeing the dark side. But hey, I'm a detective, right? The dark side is my beat. Uh, break and entry, homicides, missing persons, looking for shit in the shadows. That's what I do. That and looking for evidence and bringing in a suspect. You know, it's, uh, it's a half-assed job in a half-assed town down the Jersey Shore, has been for years, and it's a slow beat. And it's petty crimes, old grudges, same old, same old, but still, evil can happen anywhere, even here. Case number 3684599. This is the case that uh, put us on the map quest. Added to our Wikipedia entry, got us Googled more times than I can shake a stick. And what do we get famous for? That's right, evil. Like it's been said, the evil men do lives after them. The good is oft interred along with their bones. That's Shakespeare. That's Julius Caesar, uh, Act 3, Scene 2. You wouldn't think, me, right? Chuck DeSantis, a uh, detective work in a precinct on the Jersey Shore would know Shakespeare, right? And back then you would have been right, but a lot can happen in 10 years. I, back then, I didn't know shit from Sherlock, let alone Shakespeare. But things happen, and here I am quoting the bard, right? Bringing up bones, bodies, walking this story into the light like a perp. You know, shedding some light. And I ain't Shakespeare. But by way of a title, I call this story the absolute brightness of Leonard Pelkey. Allow me to set the scene. It's spring, and the tang of ocean brine is wafting through the streets of this seaside town like nobody's business. You know, sunshine and flowers blooming and every fucking thing is on the rise. As usual, I am in the station, cooped up in a cubicle with a cruller and a cup of coffee. Big Marty Branahan, whose idea of uh, an intercom is barging in the room and shouting information across the room, barges in and starts shouting information across the room. Hey, hey, Chuck, hey, they, they, there's a hot looking lady out there with her daughter. How long are you gonna keep them waiting? I mean, they, they drive me crazy with the fucking chitter chatter. Chuck, hey, Marty, how many times I gotta tell you? Use the fucking intercom. Chuck, how many times I gotta tell you? I'm old school, I'm a techno peasant. I don't, I don't know from uh, pinging, and I don't know from intercoming. It, when I started in this line of work, we communicated using fucking drums and smoke signals. <laughs> yeah, very funny, Marty. Use the fucking intercom and show them in. I, I'm not interrupting anything here, am I? Okay, um, okay. How long are you gonna keep us waiting out there? I, forget it, we're in now. Ellen Hurdle, that's my daughter Phoebe. Phoebe, come on in, darling. Okay, listen, I run the hair salon in town, you know, up on Corliss Avenue near Eddie's Deli. Hair Today. It's the name of the place. It's called Hair Today. <laughs> well, listen, we're here to report a missing person, okay? His name is Leonard Pelkey, 14 years old. That's P-E-L. You are writing this down? Write this down. She was what they used to call in my line of work a dame. A steady looker with legs up to here and a, an impressive rack and the kind of in-your-face attitude that could have you leaning up against a bar by noon knocking back shots of Johnny Walker. K-E-Y, you got that? Yeah, he's been missing 24 hours. What? Oh, 15 hours, 47 minutes to be exact. Oh my God, where's my purse? Where's my purse? Phoebe, Phoebe, get my purse. It's on the chair, right there. I swear I'd lose my pancreas if it wasn't inside me. <laughs> What? Oh, he, he's my nephew. That's enough out of you. Thanks a lot. Okay, so he's not my nephew, okay? He's my brother's ex-girlfriend's son who came to live with us two years ago when the mother, the ex-girlfriend, died. Very sad. And, you know, my brother, who happens to be a total asshole, shouldn't be allowed to care for a shih tzu, let alone a human person. Excuse my French. Hold on one second. I gotta take this. Hello? <laughs> hey. I'm Phoebe, I'm the daughter. That's my mom. Don't mind her. She's just a local hairstylist slash control freak. Basically harmless, unless you're her daughter. And then, ta-da. <laughs> 
Phoebe Hurdle, uh, 16, going on 45. And, you know, basically she's the kind of kid without the innocence you expect from a kid her age. I guess you could say that she'd been around the block, but not all the way. I bet you see a lot of dead people in your line of work, huh? Yeah, I see a lot of dead people in my mom's line of work, too, but they're all alive, walking around, having their hair done. <laughs> when they do actually drop dead, they get laid out like on a beauty bed and made to look like they're alive. My mom does their hair sometimes, which, you know, she doesn't like to do. She charges double for the dead, which she also doesn't like to do. But I tell her, you know, considering you're giving them a look that'll last for all eternity, it's <laughs> kind of like a bargain. <laughs> and you know, if it turns out to be true that the dead do rise from their graves on Judgment Day, I don't know a single one of my mom's customers that wouldn't want to look their best. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, listen, Kathy, I know. Yeah, I don't care she changed her mind. When she made the appointment, she asked for uh, frosted tips and a blowout. That's what we charged her for. Okay, well, she didn't tell us. Okay, well, tell her we're a full service salon, but we work the outside of a head only. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, this will only take a minute, it's business. Phoebe, Phoebe, show him the picture on you, you took on your phone, the one at the picnic. Just show him. Exhibit A, a JPEG of a boy, blonde hair, blue eyes, blue jeans. Basically, your normal kid. It doesn't really show in the picture, but he's really weird. Uh, no, really. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, I come from weird. <laughs> I am weird. But, you know, when weird goes too far, it just becomes bizarre, and nobody wants to be around that. And I'm not even talking about the fact that Leonard's gay. Strike that from the record, okay? No, l listen, Phoebe, we do not know that, and I don't think that uh, Leonard would like us going around telling people such things, okay? Mom, wake up. It's the 21st century. Nobody cares. I care. Oh, I care. Gay, 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 gay. That's all that anybody ever talks about now. Not that I have anything against the gays. No, my Uncle Paulie, please. He was gay like a village person. <laughs> Back in the day, he went to all the hot spots, you know, Fire Island, Provincetown, Exit 35 on the Parkway. <laughs> no. He was arrested there three times, and he didn't go around talking about it all the time. <laughs> At this point, the mother was off the phone, busy rooting through her purse, looking for, I don't know, her pancreas. <laughs> when all of a sudden, uh, uh, you all right, Mrs. Hurdle? No, I am. It's just, you know, it's just got me thinking. If anything happens to Leonard, you know, a couple of weeks ago, he came to me and he hands me this. Oh, it's Glossima High Beam Gleam by Chanel. Yeah. He told me that my uh, Maybelline Frosted Pink Lip Applicator had outlived its shelf life. Oh. Told me I ought to throw it out. Can you imagine? Said it was passe. Tell me, detective, what kind of a kid uses a word like passe? Um, a gay kid? <laughs> I'm just saying. I told him there wasn't much we could do, you know, the police, until they, uh, the kid was missing 24 hours. But I suggested in the meantime they might want to think about a poster. You know, I'd seen it work for dogs and cats and sometimes a, an escaped parakeet once. You know, people see the missing whatever on the poster, it jogs their memory, they call. What's wrong with you? Does this kid look like a parakeet? I mean, and you don't seem to understand the situation here, okay? Now, Leonard didn't know anybody in this town, except for me and Phoebe, and, you know, the customers in my salon, and the kids at school, also the teachers. Oh, and, you know, the people over at Buddy Howard's School of Drama and Dance, where we signed him up for after school, but other than that, he's a total stranger in this town. Okay, maybe you can start by telling me, who was the last person to see him? But I believe it was half six when I offered Leonard a ride home, something I often do with my older boys. 